When COVID-19 hit back in the um, late winter, early spring, we were concerned based on what we were seeing in the rest of the country as far as the amount of PPE. We were prepared at the time going into it, and there was at no point did our caregivers not have the adequate PPE, but looking down the road at what states like New York and others were experiencing, we knew that um, if we didn't take some measures proactively, um, we would be seeing shortages just like everybody else was. We saw that the trend was really to take products that were disposable, such as disposable N95s, and there was a lot of work around re-sterilizing and reusing those N95s. We quickly had concerns amongst our caregivers around the role of doing that. If we're taking disposable masks and reusing them, is a better option not to just have reusable masks that are designed for that purpose, can be cleaned appropriately, are designed to be cleaned and reused, and actually are proven that despite multiple uh, cleanings can still provide a good fit. So that's really what led us down the road of looking at a reusable elastomeric. That actually then led to um, us sitting down with their, the leadership team from MSA and saying, well, this is what you guys do. I mean, you, you are in the business of protecting frontline employees from all kinds of things. Is there something on the market that we could reuse? And very, very quickly, the answer was absolutely yes. And, um, and it really, that the relationship blossomed after that to, to determine whether were there things off the shelf that we could deploy in a cost-effective manner to offer reliable, reusable protection for our frontline employees. These masks are produced by one of our subsidiaries that is located in Jacksonville, North Carolina. We thought it was really important to have this be US-based because it's such a critical product where we can control the supply chain a bit better, the engineering, the quality, and the repeatability. And that proved true during the pandemic. One of the advantages that we had and we discussed with, with AHN was having control over that supply chain and having the end-to-end -end control to be able to make the mask when we needed to make them. The elastomeric half-mask respirators were primarily used in industrial settings, but working with Allegheny Health Network, we've been able to get really valuable data and information on some of the barriers. All of these barriers or obstacles were things that Allegheny Health Network were able to overcome, but as a product company, we want to make it as easy as possible for our customers. We want to make sure that they have the right tools to do their job for the right applications. There have been a lot of conversations around when it's appropriate to use an elastomeric, specifically because of the presence of the, uh, the exhalation valve. We really feel that elastomerics are a component of the entire armamentarium of PPE um, that every hospital should have. But there are specific applications where maybe alternative PPE would be utilized, such as disposable N95s and or PAPRs. In the OR environment where sterility is the main issue with the exhalation valve, we've taken to um, also offering PAPRs and disposable N95s, as well as the option of covering the exhalation valve with a surgical grade mask instead of just a conventional ear loop mask, one that is intended to be used in the operating room to maintain sterile procedures. Like any large new program, there's a lot of questions and a lot of confusion at a time when a pandemic is taking place. So we made as many resources as we could available to answer any questions, to reach out to any groups, provide any documentation, and provide any assistance that we could provide at various facilities to help everyone get on the same page. One of the questions we get a lot is, how often do I change the filter in an elastomeric half-mask respirator? In general, there's guidance from both CDC and NIOSH that the outside of the cartridge can be wiped down and disinfected. The filter itself really needs to be changed if it becomes soiled, if there's a problem with hygiene, or if the loading gets such that the breathing resistance becomes a problem. You really shouldn't expect to see this um, filter loading in a very clean healthcare type setting, 
but as always, it's best to follow CDC guidance for this type of issue. I think initially one of the barriers that most supply chain individuals may look at is the cost barriers of an elastomeric program versus a N95 program. We actually found quite the opposite. When you look at the number of N95s needed to properly take care of a patient in the, in the ICU, we found that it was up to sometimes over 100 N95s per shift depending on the number of caregivers. This is if they were used properly and that they were removed and changed for every uh, episode, uh, at every care point. Even if you implemented a very, very aggressive reuse program and cut that down by 75% and were using 25 N95s, it very, very quickly, uh, when you multiply that times 50 to 60 patients uh, in, in, uh, that have COVID over the course of a month. We found that the difference between having each one of those caregivers have an elastomeric that could be used for many, many t multiples of, of that at a single cost, we found that the longer you use the elastomeric mask, the cheaper they became. So it was really a no-brainer from a cost standpoint to implement this early. The main feedback that we've gotten from our frontline employees was overwhelmingly positive and continues to be overwhelmingly positive. Uh, they do feel very safe. They are really able to uh, create what's called a universal respiratory protocol, which means if you have effectively an, a never-ending supply of respirators, you can treat every patient walking in the door. Other organizations have had to employ some of the CDC guidelines, which um, honestly focus not only on the patient, but focus on PPE preservation. Wearing the MSA mask was a, was a real relief for us. Um, having them come in, it was extremely good. Um, it felt very safe and I felt confident in the product to be able to provide uh, filtration against COVID. The great thing about these MSA masks is that you can reuse them over and over again. You just have to wipe them down after each case. And I personally think it's so much better than throwing away masks and wasting the N95s which is what we had to do before we got them. My patients react to me wearing the masks. Um, first, they were kind of frightened, but that was at the beginning of when everything was happening with the pandemic. But as time has gone on, and I've been able to explain how it protects me and we, everyone is able to have one here at the hospital, they're really excited for us that we can still provide care and not delay their cases um, by having these masks. So the MSA masks um, fit really well, and I honestly forget that I'm even wearing them sometimes because they're pretty comfortable. I haven't noticed that they've affected my job at all. We were very fortunate over the last few months to be published in uh, the Journal of American College of Surgeons. That is one of the preeminent journals for uh, surgeons throughout the world. We were able to discuss how we utilized uh, an elastomeric mask program to help almost eliminate our uh, usage of disposable N95s. There was one take home from the journal article. It was that success of an elastomeric program um, really, really depends on identifying those that need it most and having a phased approach to distribution, education, fit testing, et cetera. Yeah, I think one of the real keys to a successful elastomeric mass program is implementation. You should have a plan in place that's fair and transparent around who will be getting the masks and how to allocate those masks. In our first phase, that certain um, caregivers were using the most N95s on a daily basis. So they might include caregivers such as ICU nurses, respiratory therapists, ICU doctors, anesthesiologists, nurse anesthetists, for example. In certain situations, we had a protocol around sharing those masks. In order to share a mask, we had to have a process in place which was very similar to the N95 reuse, where at the end of every shift, the masks were collected, they were taken down to our central sterile department where they were cleaned and disinfected and packaged for reuse the next day. Eventually, when we were able to procure enough masks that individuals were able to get their own, the cleaning and disinfection occurred at the uh, site of use by the individual caregiver. If that wasn't in place, we would have had to wait a lot longer to implement the program. So I think the fit testing aspect of these masks has been one of the biggest advantages. We were very, very concerned that because of the differences in people's facial structures, et cetera, and the lack of reliable consistency of N95 brands and models, that we would not have a workforce that was appropriately fit tested. The advantage of the elastomerics are that we could fit test all of our employees 
on the on the consistent make, model, and size, put them back into storage, and then when they needed them, they would get that same make, model, and size. So there were really our fit testing reliability went up significantly, which again made sure that the employees had the appropriate amount of PP that fit well at the time they needed it. There are many benefits to the elastomeric half mask respirators for healthcare workers. One of them is because it is a rubber seal and because they come in a variety of sizes, it makes fit testing easier. These are really designed to be cleaned and reused. So unlike some of the other products that you might see that you have to reuse them because you're out of the supply, these were designed from day one to be reused, to be used again over and over. I would say the, the third thing is that um, they're very easy to store. If you think about, if you're going through a lot more or a higher quantity of say N95s because you're disposing of them, then you have to store all of those. So just from a simplicity of logistics, it's a lot easier. MSA has been a great company to work with as a healthcare organization. We did not know a lot about these masks. They just weren't something that we were trained on as healthcare professionals. Working with MSA has really allowed us to, to learn about how to implement these in the healthcare field. And I think it's been, um, it's been valuable for, for us for this partnership in that they are working very, very hard um, to make sure that these, the operationalizing this process within a healthcare network is very, very smooth and efficient. There's no doubt in my mind that this is the strategy we'll continue to employ. We've learned from this pandemic, the world has learned that we have to be proactive in, in having um, the appropriate amount of PPE for COVID and for whatever the next um, uh, threat would be. We have made a commitment as an organization that we will always have these types of masks in supply and continue to work with uh, companies like MSA to, to really tailor these to the healthcare professional. Although it may not be replacing your N95s completely, uh, I do think all healthcare organizations should look at that subset of caregivers that would benefit from these masks. Our mission has always been about protecting men and women at work throughout the world, and this is really embodied by the relationship that we developed with Allegheny Health Network. And we're very proud of the programs, protocols, and products that we've been able to help them with and help keep their staff and their patients safe at work.